much. If you're thankful this morning, why don't you give God a great hand clap of praise right now? Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, if you got a song, clap your hands today. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation. this morning did he heal you yes did he free you yes did he save your soul yes did he make you whole yes, yes. did he wash you yes transform you yes did he redeem you yes and cleanse you yes yes did he set you free yes give me victory yes when he died for yes. you yes oh, Calvary yes, yes. did he give you peace yes did he give
few minutes right now. God, we magnify you, Lord, for your great Jesus. Lord, we lift you up. Come on, if he's ever given you a reason to lift your voice, why don't you show your neighbor how good God's been to you right now? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, we praise your name, Jesus. I'm so thankful that you're here today, God. We lift you up, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. How many thank, how many is thankful God's in the room? Amen, amen. Uh, let, me, let me try that one more time. Maybe I need to try another side. How many is thankful that we don't serve a dead God. I'm going to try one more time, and I promise I'm not just trying to pump you up today. I want to get a point across to you. How many is thankful we serve a God who's not only alive and well, but He's here today. And whatever you need, whatever you need, it's here because He's in the room. It's here because He's here. just seated upon the throne I know he's right here inside my home I've got a treasure here in my heart and in my weakness it won't depart I've got a savior who will abide he's not just with me he lives inside just go I stand That's the lie.
He said, I'll be with you. For the, in matter of fact, the Bible said he's the author and he's the finisher of our faith. I'm thankful today. It's good to see you, and I'm glad to see you. But, Pastor, more than anything, I'm glad Jesus is in the house today. He's the reason I'm here. He's the reason I'm excited. He's the reason I can watch the news and still be happy. Because I know my Redeemer. He said, when you see the day approaching, he said, just look up. He didn't say look down. He didn't say hang your head low. Oh my God, what's going on in the world? He said, look up. Your redemption draweth nigh. Oh, church, we are one day closer. We are one day closer to being with him throughout all eternity. I'm excited today. My, what an awesome anointing of God that is here. I want to say praise the Lord and welcome to each and every one of you, those of you that are here in person it's good to see you today. Those of you watching online, it is good to have you with us as well. We're going to pray here in just a moment. I do want to ask the prayer team if they would at this time to make your way on up to the front. I want to say it's good to see Sister Deanna with us in the house of the Lord today. Glad that she's able to be here this morning. She's still, she is still in need of prayer. She is still needing, in need of prayer, so keep her in your prayers today. Sister Joy Peters got to come home yesterday. We're so thankful for that. She also still needs our prayers. Uh, hip surgery, is a, that's, that's a major operation, so she is, she's dealing with some pain and some issues there. Remember Sister Joy, also Sister Kathy Baker got to come home yesterday as well. We're thankful for that. Uh, continue to remember Sister Kathy. She, she is doing better, but we're, we're waiting on some test results and, and some things uh, as a result of the surgery that she had and so forth. So keep her in your prayer. Uh, continue to remember Brother Ted Sanders as well as he recovers from his fall and surgery. And then this morning, if you have a need, whatever it is, just lift your hand. God sees every hand and he knows every need. So let's take them before the Lord in faith as we pray today. Father, this morning, Lord, we give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise today. Truly, Lord, I'm thankful that you're in the room. You today are the reason that we can lift up our voice and call out to you, Lord, with a need, with an issue, with a circumstance, and know, Lord, that we're not just speaking into the wind, but we're speaking to a God who is listening and who is ready, able, and willing to supply every need today. Jesus, you have seen every uplifted hand today. You know every need, every circumstance that's represented. Father, we pray today that you would grant and supply every request. We pray, Lord, for Sister Deanna this morning. God, that you would continue the healing that you are doing in her body. Continue, Lord, to touch her today. We pray for Sister Joy as she is recovering from this hip surgery. God, that you give her a speedy recovery. Help her, Lord, to work through that process in Jesus' name. We pray today for Sister Kathy. Thank you, Lord, that she is home as well. But we pray, Father, this morning that these test results which are pending, God, that that's all going to come back good, that that's all going to come back with a good report from the doctor. That's what we're asking you for this morning. And that's what we're believing for this morning. Jesus, Brother Ted, Sanders still recovering from the surgery that he had. We pray that you would touch him. And Lord, just each and every need today, God, we pray that you would grant and supply, Lord, according to your riches in glory. And for that, we give him praise. Church, right now, just lift your hands, lift your voice, give him thanks for being a prayer answering God. Give him thanks. Whatever you ask him for this morning, give him thanks in faith for doing it. If you need special prayer right now, I'm going to invite you to make your way to this altar. Whatever you need prayer for, if you want to stand in for someone, make your way to this altar. Let us pray with you this morning.
thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. When I feel walled in by my unbelief And miracles seem forever out of reach I'll stand upon the words you've given Till it's complete Every word you've spoken Will surely come to pass And I believe you're moving And you're not finished yet in my lungs you're still working for my good I'm not a finished product but you're the way maker and you're not done my story's not over no when God Shut it, no one can shut it, no devil. 
Jesus today. Come on, would you give Jesus praise? I thank you for 35 minutes of worship, but I want us to take about 30 seconds from the balcony. We have a good group in the balcony to the main floor. I want every person to participate. This is Palm Sunday. This is the triumphal entry of Jesus. This is the recognition of King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Hosanna unto the highest. Come on, why don't you use those palms? 30 seconds, why don't you lift them? Why don't you wave them? Come on, let's give Jesus. Come on, let's do it. Let's give Jesus the praise, the honor. Come on, 20 seconds. Give it to Jesus. Pour out your soul. Oh, give him the glory and the honor and the praise. King of kings, 10 seconds. King of kings, Lord of lords. Hallelujah. 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 I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Oh, my, I love you, God. Come on. With your best praise on Palm Sunday, with your with your best energy, with your best voice, lift it up in hallelujah. Shout unto God. Give him a voice of praise. Give him a voice of triumph. Hallelujah. 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 My, my, my. Why don't you turn around to three or four people, fist bump them, tell them you're glad to see them. Tell them thank you for being at Lighthouse. Come on, greet three or four people. Hallelujah. God bless you. You may be seated. God bless you, Lighthouse. You're so beautiful. I love you. What an honor to come to church with some of the most wonderful people. Not just come to church, but to do life with some of the most wonderful people in the world. We're going to be launching small groups here next month. We're going to let you know the dates on that uh, very soon, and we've got some new small groups that will be starting. We're very excited about that. But you look so good today. You look just wonderful. And uh, won't you turn to somebody and just tell them, you look better than me. And then look at somebody else and say, I may have just lied in God's house. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Good to see you. Let me say thank you. I, I know uh, some were on our worship team, but I look around. We had, I guess, Brother Jeff might be able to give me a, help me with a good number, or Brother Mike Cass, but I know we at least had about 15 men that showed up yesterday and uh, we had, uh, let's see, help me here, somebody, if I miss somebody, tell me. But I know we had, uh, I know we had Brother James on a, on a shop vac. I know we had Brother uh, Robinette Quentin on a shop vac. I know we had Brother Joe Ketron uh, on a shop vac. I know we had CJ, uh, I say Bergeron, uh, French Bergeron on a, on a shop vac, Jackson, on a shop vac. Ladies, if any of those were your husbands, they know how to use a vacuum cleaner. And they did very, very well. And so, uh, but men, we had about 15 men. Ladies came out. I think altogether we had about 40 plus people that came out and cleaned and did a great job. Would you give them just a big old hand? Just a, a big hand, big hand. I hope I didn't miss any of my shop back men. If I did, I am so sorry. And then we had uh, the scaffold out there. Brother Scotty was 
blowing the sheetrock dust off. We did a really good clean. And matter of fact, after service, at the very end, we're going to ask you to go out there and we're going to pray one more time. We're on the final push of this project being completed. We want everyone to come out and join hands with us. And we're going to ask the Lord to give us just the last bit of energy and resources and time frame to get this accomplished and uh, God's doing such excellent excellent things. Our new theater seats are installed up there and we got those things free and uh, back where I come from we call that free 99 and that's a good deal and they are beautiful they go up and look at them, they're wonderful and uh, God's doing excellent things it just keeps getting better y'all When it keeps getting better, it really does. When, when you come to Lighthouse, you don't know you don't know what all is going to happen. But let me tell you, the greatest thing that can happen is someone coming to the knowledge of Jesus Christ today, repenting of their sins, being baptized in Jesus' name. And we've got a beautiful young lady that's going to take on the name Miss Silva today. She's going to be baptized in Jesus' name. Come on, Lighthouse. Ain't that awesome? Woo! Going to take on the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And uh, if you have never taken on the name of Jesus, we've got clothes for you. The water's warm. You come on. Let's take the name of Jesus in baptism. And uh, God's doing awesome, awesome things. We've got some guests with us. We've got some guests from West Virginia, and we've got some guests from this area. If you're a first-time guest, you honor us. Lighthouse, will you help me welcome our first-time guest? God bless you. And returning guests, God bless you. God bless you. Well, this coming week is the week of all weeks for the church. It is the Super Bowl week. Uh, Wednesday evening, Sister Mac and I are going to be uh, teaching the adult small group here in the sanctuary. We're going to be talking a little bit about this week, what it means, what it represents, what Jesus did this week and how we can be like him and uh, so come out Wednesday and then Friday evening uh, Brother Alex has uh, coordinated uh, a night of worship on Friday evening with some of our area churches or they're, they're going to come and we're going to just blend together in worshiping Jesus on Good Friday that starts at 7 p.m. I can't stress this enough there's no Easter egg decoration that would be more important than that Good Friday service we're going to celebrate with worship and fellowship, and then we're going to take a communion together on Good Friday. So be here at 7 p.m. And then, of course, Saturday at 9.30 on the 30th is our breakfast. Our men is sponsoring breakfast. Uh, for everyone, it's free. And uh, bring your family and friends and neighbors to our Easter family breakfast at the school gymnasium at 9.30. And then after that, the kiddos are going to try to find those eggs. We're going to do an egg hunt. So it's going to be an excellent weekend, an excellent weekend. And, uh, <laughs> and then, of course, Sunday... Sunday is going, 31st is Resurrection Sunday. We are celebrating the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We're having one service, 11 a.m. Be here, bring somebody with you, and we're going to have just a great, great time. Uh, I want to, uh, they're going to put up our ways to give, and I want you to, to look at this. Thank you for your donations. And while they're putting this up, if you need to have internet service, you can hook into our guest service, and you can give your tithes and offerings online. There's also envelopes in front of you that you can donate in-house and drop them in these black boxes uh, by the exit doors. Thank you for your generosity. Thailand has been such a God success. We were raising money, about 5,000 5, plus, to create 1,000 Bibles for the Thailand people uh, for those 25 churches. The pastors have Bibles, but most of the people do not. And God laid it on our heart to raise the money. Uh, and folks, they've got Bible school students that we're going to be able to sponsor. But I want you to give yourself just a big hand here in just a moment because right now with the $2,500 match that we have, uh, we have raised, and this is so excellent, we have raised over $11,000 for Thailand. Come on, come on, give Jesus a hand. Come on, give Jesus. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Thank you for faithful people. Thank you for the burden, God, of missions. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Please, if God's put a number in your heart, we're not finished. Uh, we're taking offerings all the way through March. The, the Bibles are going to be a little more than $5 each. We have learned that, so uh, the extra monies will help tremendously. And then the Bible school students. We want to sponsor and pay for these Bible school students that's being trained to be pastors and ministers. They're in Thailand. It takes $2,000 for the whole year. And that's room and board. That's even clothing. They buy clothing for them. Uh, they provide them with meals every day. And it pays for the professor's coming in and ministry. Uh, so if you could, uh, if you go online and you will see a tab there uh, for Thailand Bibles, please be generous. And uh, thank you for your tithes and offerings today. Just by an amen or a hand clap, who would, who would just admit that God's been good to you? Who would admit? God's been good, hasn't he? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you uh, for your worship today. We're so excited to have one of my uh, friends that have become, he's become a good friend to me. I value our friendship. Um, he's quite a bit older. I mean, he's a little bit older than me. Uh, he, he told me somebody gave him the senior discount at lunch the other day, and I said, praise God for that. He was a little upset about it, but I, I'd receive it in Jesus' name, that discount. Brother Martin, uh, those of you that used to go to youth conferences with us back in the 90s, he was our youth leader, and, and the youth conferences grew tremendously. Uh, he was our national youth director, and he used churches and young men and young women. He has such a heart and a spirit. When Jackson and Jorah knew that he was coming, they love him. He's just got a spirit of love for young people, and his ministry is one of love and mercy grace and restoration. I'm proud to call Robert Martin my friend, and uh, he, he served not just as our national youth director, he led a ministerial organization that I was a part of and led it well. They saw growth during his time of leadership. He's a kingdom man, and he has written a book. He has a limited supply. I think you, did you say, Reverend, you have four or five or six of those? Okay, six books, and it's a good book. It's, tw it's a thick book. It's $20. You can go online and give an offering for it. We'll trust you. If you say, Pastor, I gave the offering online, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to trust you. If you didn't, you know, that's between you and God. But if you want to go online and give the $20 offering, the, the, the book name is Pierced. This is written from experiences. I, I won't say, if he wants to tell more about it, he can in life, we have hurts. In, in life, we have difficulties. We were talking last night. One of the reasons I really like Brother Martin is he walks my dog with me. We did a mile and a half last night, and he, he walked that dog with me, and we, we talked. And, but preachers, some of you don't know this, preachers have some of the loneliest roads to travel especially pastors. There's no such thing as good friends to pastors. And uh, he has written a book from experience called Pierced. And it's talking about the experience of Jesus Christ on the cross. And what a season to pick this book up. Folks, I highly, I've got this book. I've read this book. I highly endorse this book, Pierced. Come and purchase this book today. And I know what's in it will bless you tremendously. Well, without any further ado, it is my great honor to introduce my friend. He is a full-time evangelist now, and God is using him. He pastored for many years, and now he's an evangelist, and he goes all over the country, different cultural groups, ethnic groups, and God is blessing him tremendously. We are blessed at Lighthouse to have the ministry of evangelist Robert Martin today. Would you put your hands together? Welcome my friend to this pulpit. Come on, would you stand? Stand with me. Let's welcome him today. Hallelujah. Let's magnify him. Thank you, Jesus. I worship you today. I magnify you today, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord, we bless your name. We bless your name, Jesus. So good to be in the presence of God. What a blessing it is to be in the house of the Lord. And 
I'm, I'm going to turn your attention to the Gospel of John. And as we're turning there to the very end, chapter 20 of the Gospel of John, and while we're turning, I want to say what a pleasure it is to be with you here in Kingsport today. And I give honor to your pastor and his wife and, and family, and I think we need to give our leadership a hand of appreciation. Thank God for those that lead us in the ways of God. <clears throat> and uh, so I have to be careful what I tell him. I, I mentioned about the, I, I went to eat, and when I went to pay, and I looked at my ticket, and on the bottom it had senior citizen discount. And I didn't say anything, ask for anything, and I don't even look like that. You know? <laughs> so I took a picture and sent it to my wife, and I said, I don't know what they're doing, but it's money off. I guess I'll take it. But by the time he was done talking about me, I didn't know if I'd be able to walk up these steps or not. But I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord with you wonderful people. What a great church. It, this edition is, is fabulous. I mean, it's just fabulous. It's breathtaking. It's, it's stunning. And uh, I know you're, you'll be so excited when that is, is done. And it's, it's a process just like our lives, but it will get done. And uh, I'm glad to be in church. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord today? Amen. What, what a, again, a great day to be here. Thank you again, Pastor and uh, Sister Pastor. Thank you all so much. And I, I'm just honored to be with you. And uh, Brother Macmillan is a great man of God. I appreciate him and his heart and his vision and the work of God here. And uh, I pray God would just speak to us for the next few minutes. I uh, certainly enjoyed the teaching this morning, Pastor, and, and the singing and the worship. Didn't they do a great job just leading us in the presence of God? Uh, just wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. I want Jesus to help me today. I need the help of the Lord. How about you? Need the help of the Lord. In John chapter 20, I'm going to read verse 1, <clears throat> then I'm going to skip down to verse 11. And I know I'm a week ahead of what today represents, but uh, uh, this, this is, of course, at the, the resurrection when Mary showed up at the tomb. The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark, Unto the sepulchre, and see if the stone taken away from the sepulchre. Verse 11. But Mary stood without at the sepulchre, weeping, and as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulchre, and seeth two angels in white sitting, the one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. And they say unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She saith unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing and knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She, supposing him to be the gardener, saith unto him, Sir, if thou have borne him hence, if you've taken him, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said unto her, Mary. She turned herself and saith unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Look at verse 15. She said, if you've taken him away, if you'll tell, tell me where he is, I will take him. I will take him. I want to preach this morning on this thought. I will take him. I'll take him. Does anybody feel that way today? I'll take him. I'll take him. Lift your hands once again. Give the Lord praise. Would you call on him right now? Jesus, I praise you. Jesus, I worship you. Jesus, I magnify you, Lord. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this moment. Thank you for this church. Thank you for this people. Thank you for this pastor and family. Thank you for your spirit. God, I give you glory and praise and honor. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 
Blessed be the name of the Lord in Jesus' name. Would you give him a great applause? Oh, hallelujah. Come on, what a great day to be in his presence. What a great day to be in the presence of God. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated. Even though Jesus had taught it and he told his disciples, they did not understand the concept of resurrection on the third day. As a matter of fact, later, even after this particular story, the Bible specifically says that they knew not and they didn't understand so that part of the teaching just kind of was lost in, the, in, in his presence and all the things he was doing. But he tried to let them know that that day would come. But they were ignorant of it, oblivious to it. And when they took Jesus and crucified him, as a matter of fact, before crucifixion, the Bible says all the disciples fled. They all ran away from him. And Jesus was left in that horrible moment when he took on the sins of the world, including mine and yours. In that moment, they were all gone except John who returned and his mother standing there watching and grieving over her son being crucified and being exposed to all of those about as he was facing that great insult and horrific death. But thanks be unto God for the promise that we know that he rose on the third day. Aren't you glad he's still alive even now? So they... They didn't understand it, though, so much so that after he had died, the disciples were thinking the story is over. We must go back to our ways, go back to fishing and mending our nets and doing whatever we were doing before because it was a good ride and it was fun and it was, uh, it was uh, memorable, but now it's over. And Jesus has died and Jesus has been buried in the tomb and this is the end of the story. Mary Magdalene was one of those who loved Jesus. Jesus had cast multiple demons out of her, and she never forgot it. She never forgot how that Jesus had ministered to her and cast those demons and all that darkness and that pain out of her life. And she was so thankful that she would follow Jesus and she would worship him and followed after him. She was always there in life. As a matter of fact, Mary Magdalene is named... 12 times in the Gospels, which is more than most of the disciples. She's mentioned because what God had done for her, what Jesus had performed in her life, she is now walking with him. But when he dies, she grieves because the one that she loved, the one that had been so good to her, that had delivered her, was now gone. But now she's there in death when no one else is around. Because Mary Magdalene determined that I'm going to go and honor the body. I'm going to go there. I'm going to be there even though he's dead. <clears throat> even though he's no longer with us. She said, even if he's dead, I'm still going to be there for him as he was there for me. So she went. The Bible said it was yet dark. It always is in times like those. It's yet dark. And she comes in the darkness and she goes and she walks to that tomb not knowing what to expect. We know the rest of the story, but she didn't know the rest of the story. Not, not knowing what to expect. He's dead. He's dead. The mouth that spoke with authority is silent. The hands that reached it and ministered to people are closed. And the feet that walked into the lives of the needy are motionless. The heart that beat with love and compassion has stopped. This, this vibrant Savior has now died. The lover of souls is now cold and dead. And of course, as I said, it's yet dark. But she came. She came without expectation. She did not come knowing that he would be risen. She did not come knowing that he would defeat the grave. She did not know that, but she went. As a matter of fact, she thinks that somebody stole the body away. Where is he? Who took him? Where did you take him? Where did you put him? Just tell me where his body is. And if you'll tell me where his body is, I will take him. Notice what she says. I'll take him even if it appears he has nothing to offer me. I'll take him if nobody else wants him. I'll take him if you just tell me where he is. I'll take him. I'll gladly take him. 
And there she is just to weep, just to reflect, just to show her appreciation because she loved him still, still. Her devotion was not based only on what God was doing and what he had done for her, but her devotion was based on who he was. I love him. He's been good to me. And I want to praise him and I want to honor him because of his goodness. Even if it appears it's over. Even if it seems he is lifeless now. What he has given me and what he has meant to me is worthy of my devotion and my adoration. I wonder sometimes if my devotion is based on God constantly doing things for me. I wonder if my devotion is based on the fact that I can pray and worship and know that God is able and has on occasion healed my body. I wonder if my devotion is just based on God being good to me. He's, he's a good God. We sing about it and we praise him because he is. As a matter of fact, I could, I could ask for a show of hands of people in the building who at least one time in your life have been healed. And hands would go up. Matter of fact, y'all just raise your hand if you've ever been healed by God. Let me ask you, is, any, is anybody in the building ever face a situation that you didn't think you would make it out of, but you did? You see, you are a living testimony to the goodness of God. I wonder if there's anybody in the building who's ever been forgiven of sin. So we sing and we praise him and we worship him as we should. But what if you face a season in your life in which it seems to be that he is distant and silent, dead to you, perhaps? What is it if it's, if it's not constant motion and God constantly doing things are we spoiled to the point that God has to constantly do for us for us to worship him oh let me tell you I want to praise him he's been good to me but I want to praise him whether I feel him or not the preacher says lift your hands and praise him you say well I don't feel like praise him today. I don't praise him just because I feel like it. I don't praise him just because I feel him. I praise him because he's God. And because of what he's already done, he's done enough for me, for me to praise him all my days. Blessed be the name of the Lord, but it's not easy. It's not easy when you're in the valley, Lo. It's not easy when you can't feel him when you lift your hands. It's not easy when you don't hear his voice that you want to hear. It's not easy when you feel like that he has gone on vacation or perhaps is distant or his ears are closed up and he can't hear. It's not easy, but Mary said, even if he's dead, even if the story is over, I'm still going to be there and I will take him if nobody else wants him. I want him. Somebody in the house feel that way today. I will take him. I will take him. I'll take him in the high point. I'll take him in the low point. I'll take him when I'm on the mountain top. I'll take him when I'm in the valley low. I'll take him when I'm healed and shouting. I'll take him when I'm sick and low. I'll take him because God is good and he's faithful to me and I want to praise him at all times. I will take him. I'll, I will take him. You just show me where he is. I'll take him. His body, all that's there is, she thinks, in her mind, all that's there is the shell. It's just the body, the dead body. I'll take him even when he's dead. And I began to think, Pastor, of his body, his body, the church, his body, being the church. What about the church, the body of Christ? What about when it's not in 
revival mode? What about when it uh, seems silent? What about when maybe it seems a little monotonous going to the church and doing things? What about when the body of Christ, when there are people that might be, now probably not here, I know this is Tennessee, a lot, you people a lot better than the Cajun people in Louisiana, you know, but probably. But sometimes, what if there's somebody that gets disgruntled? Y'all might not even know what that word means in church, but sometimes people get disgruntled with the body because the body is still and lifeless and dead. What about when some choose to leave and, and you don't like it and it hurts when they leave the body, this particular congregation, I should say. What about when inspiration is, is low and discouragement is high? What about when the fire isn't so obvious? What about when you, when you don't understand the voice of the shepherd. What about when there's conflict with fellow members and when it seems lifeless? You love his body anyway. Would you hear me please? You love his body even when it doesn't seem to be functioning as you think it should be functioning at the time because it's just a season. Would you hear me please? I feel the Lord in this house. Mary said, I'll take him. It doesn't matter what state the body is in at this moment. My commitment is, is not dependent on phases or feelings or times or seasons. Not as you think he should be. Not as you think the, the church should be. And, and, and you know, somebody did this or that. I, I've, heard, I've heard it all. Believe me, I've heard it. Yes, even back there, I've heard it. I've heard people say, well, you know, I, I love God. Man, I love God so much, but I can't stand some people. Man, I would, I would love to worship there if it wasn't for this person or that person. You know, the, the Hatfields and McCoys, that's not real far from here, isn't it? Like the next state over. I remember reading something one time about the Hatfields and McCoys, like a present generation of, of you know, what, what, how did all that start? What, wasn't it? Why, why do you hate Mr. McCoy? Why do you hate the Hatfield so much? Why, 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 why is that? And, he's, and you know what he, the answer was? He, it was in the paper. I read it. He said, I don't know. That's just the way it's always been. My grandpa was that way. My dad was that way. Great grandpa. That's just what we're supposed to do. Well, how did all this start? I don't know. It, I think it might have been over a stolen pig or something. But, you, but hear, hear me, the, the, the church, the, the, the body, we, we are not perfect. We have our issues and problems. And, and, and let me tell you, before you say, well, they hurt my feelings, can't, let, let me remind you at some point, you hurt somebody's feelings. We've all been on both sides of the equation where we've hurt or been hurt. But I want you to know I need the body. I need the warmth of the body. I need fellowship. I need to go where somebody can pray with me and help me. I need somebody who can believe in me and give me a word of faith and a word of hope. I need my brothers and sisters. And I want you to know in this world that we live in, all the darkness, all the pain, all the chaos, all the junk, the world is not your friend. The world is not your friend. The world wants to see you dead and desolate and hopeless, but I'm going to go to the house of God where I can find life and hope and strength. And I will forgive my brother. I will forgive my brother. I, you hear me? I will forgive my brother. Everybody's worth saving, but nobody's worth going to hell over. Would you please just cleanse your heart and say, God, help me to love my brothers and my sisters because they are not your enemy. The enemy is out there. The enemy is not in here. Give each other the benefit of the doubt just like you want the benefit of the doubt. The devil... Beelzebub, those flies will corrupt our minds and our hearts and our spirit. But when we get the anointing of God upon us, it causes all of that junk to flee. I need my brother. I need the church. I need my sister. I need you. 
There's already enough people that are intent on our demise. I need somebody. Like up here in the great, somebody, come up, come up. You come with your family and friends and let's pray and let's touch God. I need the presence of God. And listen, the tide will turn if you just hang in there. You think it's all dead. You think it's all over, but it's not. While you think it's dead, unbeknownst to you in that tomb, breath is coming back and the heart's starting to beat again. It's going to happen. I said it's going to happen. Be faithful anyway. Be faithful anyway. Remember all that he has done. And when things go wrong, I told you to raise your hand if you're healed, forgiven, blessed. Now let me, can we just be honest a minute? I wonder how many of you could raise your hand if there's anything that's ever gone wrong in your life. But those times don't take away from the other times. It's a season. He's dead. He's gone. It's over. So Mary thought. But when things go wrong, let me, let me tell you this. When things go wrong, we have to make a conscious effort to assume the best about God rather than the worst. You hear me? When things go wrong, you have to make a conscious, conscious effort. You have to make a conscious effort to assume the best about God rather than the worst. Remember where he brought you from. He's brought you a mighty long way. Remember where you are. You're in the presence of the king. Glory. Remember who you are. You're bought with a price. Come on. You got to remember that. Pastor, I was thinking, I just thought of this the other day, and, and, and it may be way off base, but let me just, just mention this to you. When people are coming up here to get anointed, the people that come up here are people that are sick, broken, need help, need prayer. In the Old Testament, in the Old Testament, when they anointed with oil, who did they anoint? They anointed the kings to be king. They anointed the royalty, the priesthood, the whoever. They, that's who they anointed. They poured the oil on them, those people who were priests and kings and so forth. They got the oil treatment in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, it says, if there's any sick among you, let them call for the elders of the church and they'll pray for you. So if you're sick, and not only that, if, you, if you're sick, when you get anointed for oil, by oil, if you've committed any sins, they will be forgiven. Now that's a good little extra, isn't it? So, so he can heal you and forgive your sins when you're anointed with oil. And I began to think about that. In the Old Testament, again, it was for royalty. In the New Testament is for the broken and the hurting. What does that tell us? That tells me that God sees you differently than you see yourself. When you come up here all broken and hurt and need, needing help, he, you see yourself as shattered and broken. He sees you as a king. He sees you as royalty. And he says, put my oil on them. I want to anoint that person because even if they're broken, even if they're hurting, they belong to me. Don't forget who you are. Don't forget your name is in the book. Don't forget God's been good to you. My son Noah told me the other day, he said, Dad, I just finished, he been reading through the Bible. He said, I just finished reading Revelation, the book of Revelation. And immediately I'm thinking, oh man, that's, that's interesting. Let's see. I said, what about it, son? You got all the beasts and the vials and the wrath and the antichrist and the false prophet and all this stuff. It's all this, all these things, right? Got all that stuff. So I said, so out of the book of Revelation that you just finished reading, what stands out to you? What is it that stands out to you the most? He said, I'm in the book. What stands out to me is I'm in the book. 
And I want you to know that no matter what's happening, what goes on, just make sure you're in the book. And I'm with some people today who've been baptized in the name of Jesus. You said somebody's going to get baptized today in the name of Jesus. Oh, come on, you belong to him. When you take on his name, you're in the covenant with God. He doesn't forget you. You belong to him, and he belongs to you. Don't forget who you are. Don't forget who you are. You belong to him. So I, I praise him and I magnify him and I thank him for even the church at the worst times of the church in the times of struggle and when money is short and problems are many and all of the things that you deal with in, in church, just stay, hang in there, stay there, stay there. Somebody says, well, I'm going to go where the fire is burning. Why not just start a fire where you are and just help build a fire? Stay there because even though you feel like the body is dead and decomposed, listen to me when I tell you it's just a season. He's going to come forth out of that tomb. The body is going to return vibrant and strong and healthy and powerful. Because after all, thank you, after all, the body's not really dead. Mary comes thinking, it's dead. It's over. Mary came. And she, when she came again at night in darkness, and she comes to the sepulcher, and when she looks, and the stone's rolled away, and she looks in there, and you know what she sees? She sees she, she, two angels. Where Jesus' body was, one at the head, one at the feet. Now, she probably didn't think of that, but I think of this when I read that. I think about the mercy seat. I think about in the Old Testament, the Ark of the Covenant, how that there's an angel on this side and on this side, and they're looking down into the mercy seat. So she walks in. Now think of that. She's walking in. She's crying. She's sad. Jesus is gone. She walks in. She sees two angels. And she doesn't say, oh, holy angels. You know what she says? Where's Jesus? There's two angels. One this end, one that end, looking in, looking down where the body of Jesus had lain. Can I tell you? Mary, you don't know yet, but he is not there. Because, because you see, Jesus is the mercy seat. And Jesus is not restricted to a box no longer. No longer is mercy seated in a sealed box. But mercy is flowing out of the box in every direction to every person. He's alive and, and he's not held by the constraints of man anymore. Those angels were looking at where he was, but he is not there now. He is everywhere trying to find the hurt, trying to find the sin sick, trying to find the broken, trying to find somebody who needs him. That's why he's here today. Because the box couldn't hold him. So she may not have seen that, but the representation is. And, and she says, I'll take him. Would just somebody just please tell me where he is? Thank God for the mercies of God that came alive because of death, burial, and resurrection. And now Jesus is constantly looking and moving. He's moving in your church today. He's moving in neighboring churches today. He's moving in churches in every state and every country where churches are planted. The Spirit of God moves because Jesus is no longer restricted to a one-time access of a priest through the veil to the holiest of holies. But he's here right now. And Mary... Mary, do you understand who he is? This God that we're talking about is a God who is ready to minister to all, not just to the religious group, not just to the Jews, not just to these. It flows to everyone. And even the religious establishment criticized Jesus' every move because they thought it was just for them and it wasn't for anybody else. They thought he was too merciful. How can you forgive that woman caught in the act of adultery? How can you go to Zacchaeus, the tax collector, the scum of the earth? How can you go to his house? 
How can you do these things? How can you go eat with sinners? How can you stop and pick up children and embrace children and twirl them around and love them? How can you be that for this person? How can you let, how can you touch a leper? How can you let a woman with an issue of blood touch you? How can you do that? How can you do these things? How can you hear when a blind man cries out and says, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. How can you do that? It's because because even though Jesus was born with a destiny to Calvary, he always has time to listen to the cry of one solitary soul. If one person will call on him, he hears you. Even today, my say, I know he hears brother so-and-so. I know he hears sister so-and-so. You come with your problem, with your world ravaged and your problems in your life, and you wonder, does he hear me? Does he see me? I am telling you in my confidence in him and his word, if you will call on him, he will hear you when you call. Can I get a witness from the house? Has anybody ever called on him in your distress and the Lord heard you? Is there anybody? that he ever picked up out of the miry clay? God heard you. Is there anybody when the sink was sinking, you cried out to God and he rescued you? Come on, praise him just a moment. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He ministers. It doesn't matter the problem. It doesn't matter the situation. He ministers. The demoniac, nobody, the Bible said they couldn't tame him. They couldn't tame him. People tried. They tried to harness him. They tried to tie him up. They tried to keep him. But he's out in the, out in the night, naked in the tombs, cutting himself, crying and screaming out. And as he's doing that, by the way, you know that's what demons will do. They'll, they'll make you cut yourself. They'll try to make you injure yourself. All they're about, all the en enemy is about is injury. And he's crying out. Nobody can tame him. He's a, he's, let me tell you, he's what you call a problem person. But when Jesus showed up, the spirits immediately said, oh, no, he's going to make us leave. He's done that before. Can we go over here to these pigs? Jesus said, yeah, go hog wild. <laughs> Just go on. And they went and got in the pigs, and the pigs were like, we don't like this either. They went and jumped over a cliff. Even the, even the pigs had enough sense to know we don't want demons in us. So don't go pamper them and pet them, you see. But can I tell you this? Can I tell you that when, when, when Jesus healed that man, the next time you, or delivered that man, next time you see him, he's clothed and in his right mind. Because it might have been a problem to everybody else that tried to tame him, but it's not a problem to Jesus who can do what nobody else can do. The Bible says Jesus must needs go through Samaria. He had to go to Samaria because there was one woman there, a Samaritan woman who the Jews thought of as, as dogs. There are so many factors involved here in which Jesus, according to the religious traditions, shouldn't have anything to do with this woman. But Jesus said, I'm going to go there because there's somebody, one person at a lonely well who needs me. And Jesus goes to the well, and he sits on the well, and the woman comes to get water. And, and he, being a Jew, he asks, he said, would you give me something to drink? And she's like, who are you, a Jew asking me? Don't you know that y'all don't have anything to do? We're, we're scumbags to you. We have, you have nothing to do with us. And what Jesus was saying, would you give me drink? What he is saying, listen, I don't care what everybody else has said about you. I don't care what the religious society has said about you. I don't care what everybody else says about you. I'm willing to drink from the same cup you drink from. Because they didn't have much of styrofoam cups they drank out of. You just had one little cup. To, and Jesus said, look, you've, you've drunk, you, you have drank from there? I will as well. Because I want you to know, Miss Woman at the Well, I love you. I love you. And I want you to be my bride in the church. I care about you. I love you. So his long, this long conversation that Jesus had, it's the longest conversation with a, a single person that he had, and it was a woman that had been divorced five times. And the one she's with now, number six, number six, she's, what's the word, shacked up with him. They're not even married. Five have come and gone. Number six, she's living with him. 
And you know something? Jesus doesn't even condemn her over all that. He says, go get your husband. I don't have one. You said, right, you've had five. The one you're with now is not. And, and so she had five attempts at a man, and then six which she's with there now. But you know what Jesus was showing her? None of them can satisfy, but number seven's here now. And number seven is perfection. And I'm what you've been looking for your whole life. Nobody else can satisfy like I can satisfy. Nobody else can be there for you like I can be there for you. Nobody can do for you like Jesus can do for you. What a God he is. He's out of the box. While Mary's crying, thinking he's dead, he's not dead. He's out of the box. And of all those people that Jesus ministered to, Mary was one of those. And she loved deeply. Nobody else was there. You would think the disciples would be the first ones there, but no, not them. They're over there hiding in a room somewhere, threw the key away. We're scared, we're scared, we're scared. But she comes up in the nighttime. She makes her way to that tomb. And she knows it's dark and it's cold. And, but she goes see, seeking nothing in return. Just to be near his body. And she asks the angels, have you taken him away? Where is he? Would you, if, if I just knew where he was. Where he was. And the angels didn't phase her one bit. Then she steps out and she's crying. She's weeping. Where is Jesus? Where is Jesus? And she turns out, when she turns out, she sees somebody and she thought him to be the gardener. And when she sees him, he says to her, woman, why are you, why are you weeping? Why are you crying? Well, you see, they've taken away my, my Savior, my Lord. They've taken away Jesus and Mr. Gardener. If you could just tell me where he is, I will take him. Nobody else on this God-forsaken earth wants him. I'll take him. You just tell me where he is. You just point me in the direction. You just tell me where he is. And she turns around weeping to walk away. And as she turns to walk away weeping, Jesus says, Mary, Mary, she didn't recognize when she saw him, maybe she's so clouded with tears or maybe the, the resurrected body, the difference of that, but the point is when she heard him say her name, Mary, she turned around and she began to fall down, weep. Tears of sorrow turns to tears of joy because here he is. He never left. He's always been here. And I just didn't recognize him. I didn't see him. I didn't hear his voice. I didn't hear what he had to say. I couldn't hear him. I couldn't understand. I couldn't sense it. I couldn't feel it. But God has not gone away. And she said, I will take him. So I come today to this wonderful church and this wonderful people to tell you, I will take him. I'll take him. But I just have a feeling that I'm not the only one that would say, I'll take him. Anybody else want him? Is there anybody else that deep down in your spirit you say, I'll take him. Take this whole world. But give me Jesus. I'll take him. Whether they want him or not. Whether mom wants him or not, I want him. Whether dad wants him or not, I want him. Grandma and grandpa don't want him, I want him. If husband or wife don't want him, I want him. He's been too good to me for me to leave in the sad state of thinking that he's not present, I will take him. And today I'm telling you, you know what he's doing? He's speaking your name. As a matter of fact, if you would just close your eyes for a moment and I want you to listen. 
We don't hear sometimes because we hear all the other voices. But I want you to know he's speaking. He's calling your name. If you would listen, you might hear a slight rap at the door. It seems so faint with all of the screaming of the adversary and all the noise and confusion of voices and all the tumult in our world. But if you would just stop long enough to meditate and listen, you very well may hear. Because he's there at the door knocking, saying, if you would just open to me. If you'd let me in, I'll come in, I'll sup with you. You know what he's saying? I'll go to your house. Nobody else might go, not go to your house. Nobody else thinks you're important enough to go to your house. But he says, I'm right here ready to come in and sup with you. I'm ready to be in your house. I'm ready to be in your earthen vessel. I'm ready to be with you. I love you. I care about you. I love you and I care about you. Would you hear me? I love you and I care about you. I want 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 you. Nobody else may think that I care, but I care and I want you. I want you. I want you. I just wonder if you could repeat back to him, Lord, I want you. I want you, Jesus. Why don't we lift our hands right now? Come on, all across the building. Would you lift it? your hands? Begin to call on him right now. I want you, Jesus. I want you, Jesus. I want you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will take him. I will take him. Stand with me, please. Seeing as musicians are getting ready, I, it wasn't very many weeks ago I was preaching in a church. And there were several first-time guests there. And there was a, one couple, it was a man and his wife. And I noticed during the worship and even during the preaching, she was, she was just so broken. She was standing there. He was standing there kind of stoically, but she, right next to him, she was, she was just broken, just sobbing and sobbing, crying. And at the end of the service, we made an altar call, and, and she's standing there sobbing, and some people went to her in the second row there and just started praying with her. And, and then I went over and talked to her a little bit and, and, and come to find out it was their first time in church and, and listening to the, feeling the move of God and the Spirit of the Lord ministering to them. It was just, I found out afterwards it was just a few weeks prior to this point in time where she was suicidal. She wanted to take her life because of problems that she was facing and issues that she was dealing with in her life that she did not want to live. And she walked into the house of God still with that brokenness, still with that pain, still with that disconnect, still with that loss. And she walked in there in the Spirit of God, Jesus out of the mercy box, Jesus out of the box came to her and ministered to her standing there and all of a sudden she began to stammering lips speaking stammering lips and he standing next to her looked and observed her and saw her and then it came on him and he started weeping and the spirit of God moved upon that couple and they wanted to be baptized and they told the pastor because they'd been through so much together they said we want to be baptized together so they took the husband and the wife into the baptistry, one on each side of the little, little baptistry, and they baptized them together at the same time in the lovely name of Jesus. And thanks be unto God, he filled them with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. If you'll just take him. I said, if you'll just take him. Take him today. Take him home with you. Take him. He'll help you. Another service, another place, not that long ago. I noticed a man during altar service came up. And when he came up, he had, he had tattoos all over. I mean, you couldn't hardly see a piece of flesh that didn't have tattoo on his lips everywhere, all of that. And that's fine. He had, he had uh, in his hand a hexagram. He had you know, a lot of satanic stuff. And come to find out, it was his first time in church. He came to church. He was living with a group of Satanists basically in an abandoned little building somewhere. And somehow they got into an argument. <laughs> he said, well, I'll go to church. I get to show them. I'll show y'all. 
so he went to church and he came up there the spirit of the Lord moved on him and I saw that tattooed body those hands and the arms going up in the air and that face lifted up and tears streaming down his face and God filled him with the Holy Ghost the first time in church now I want to do a little side note here and say take that devil you see if you'll just take him life will come to you hope will come to you resurrection to come to you if you will just take him I wonder does somebody want my Jesus today does somebody want to take him I will take him God I'm asking right now for the Holy Ghost to flow over this people God I pray that the Spirit of the Lord would minister to everyone in this building right now from the young to the old, from the young married couples to the elders in the church, I pray that the Spirit of Almighty God would flow like a river in here, touching every dry and desolate area of our hearts and our lives. I pray that somebody, even in here, who the last few weeks themselves have said, there's no reason for me to live. I'll rebuke that spirit that would rest upon your mind right now. And I am telling you, there is hope for you in him. He has not given up on you. It doesn't matter how many sins you've committed, where you committed them, who you committed them with, how many years of your life have been wasted in sin. It doesn't matter if you're alcoholic or you're a drug addict. It doesn't matter if, you're, if you've been perverted. It doesn't matter what's happened in your life. It doesn't matter what's happened. It doesn't matter if you were abused when you were a child. It doesn't matter. I know it, uh, what I mean. I know it matters. But what I'm saying is there's a God that will love you in spite of your self-condemnation and your pain and the condemnation that you feel in your spirit. If you will take him, he will love you and he will be with you always. Is there anybody in the building that needs him today? Is there anybody in the building who wants him? The altars are open as it was earlier for anointing. They're open now if anybody just wants to come and say, Lord, I need you. I need you. You might want to come with your spouse. You might want to come with your children. You might want to come with a friend. You might just want to say, God, I will take you. I will take you. I want you, Jesus. I will take you, Lord, because I want you in my life. I need you, Jesus, every hour and every day in the midst of my pain. I need you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. Come on, church, let's begin to touch God right now. We're about done, but let's just touch God for a moment right now. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Come on, I rebuke the, the doubt and the fear that comes upon you right now. I rebuke the enemy that tells you you're not valuable enough and that you don't count. I rebuke the lies of the devil that tells you you don't count. I'm telling you, count. You count. You count. You count. You count. You matter to God. You matter to God. Come on, young people. Come on. Come on, somebody. Say, God, I need you today. I will take you. I will take you. I will take you. I will take you. Right now, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. There's somebody right now. Somebody right now. Take on the precious name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is Miss Silva going to take on the name of Jesus. Her sins are going to be washed away, and we're believing God fills her with the power of the Holy Spirit. She is taking Jesus today. If you want to be baptized, after we baptize this precious lady, you come up front today. And we'll baptize you in Jesus' name. All right, Miss Silva. Sylvia, I'm sorry. They told me Silva. I'm sorry. Miss Sylvia, upon the confession of your faith and obedience to our Lord's command, I now baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. You shall be filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm so proud. Christ is risen, oh, bow down before Him, for He is Lord of all. Sing hallelujah, Christ is risen, oh, what a Savior, oh, what a Savior.
beautiful group at this altar. What a powerful word we've heard. I'm going to ask every believer that would, that's not embarrassed of Jesus, I want you to step out and come up here to this altar as a community of faith. And I want us to have a final prayer together. I want us to encourage each other. Would you step out? There's plenty of room. If you're a believer in Jesus, if you're in love with Jesus, if you say, God, nobody takes you, but I'm going to take you. Would you step out today? Come close. As they sing this a few more times, pour your heart out to Jesus today. Come on, give your heart to Jesus today. Why don't you be born again today? Receive the Holy Spirit today. 
Come on, step out. Get close in Jesus' name. Get close in Jesus' name. Oh, I love you, Lord. I love you, God. I pour my heart out to you, God. I pour my heart to you, Jesus. I give you my heart. I give you my mind. I give you my hurts. The body may feel dead, but you are alive. You are alive, Jesus. You are alive. Oh, you're in this season. You're in this moment. You're in this moment. You're in this moment. You're alive, Jesus. You're alive, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, church. Come on, church. Come on, church. I need you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. For he is Lord of all. Sing hallelujah. Christ is risen. Oh, what a Savior. I need you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. I love you, Lord. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. where you're standing would you place your hand on the person beside you or in front of you come on family let's pray like a family come on lighthouse family let's pray with love one for another come on let's pray right now for the person beside you or in front of you come on pray the power of the holy ghost pray the power of the healing come on pray the miracle in the name of jesus Father, we believe in you. We trust you. The miracle working power of God. We pray for healing. We pray for deliverance. We pray a miraculous touch on every man and woman, every child. Let the power of God touch them. We pray for Sister Pam Mulkey. We pray for a miracle upon Sister Pam today, God. Touch Sister Pam. Touch her body, God. We pray for Sister Joy Peters, God, for miracle. We pray for Sister Kathy Baker, for miracle. In the name of Jesus, we believe, we believe, we believe, we believe. We believe. We believe. We believe. Hallelujah. Why don't you give Jesus a hand? Jesus, Jesus, I want you. Jesus, I take you. Jesus, I receive you. I receive you. Oh, hallelujah. What a powerful spirit of the Lord that is still here right now. God is touching in such a beautiful way. Hallelujah. I wonder if we could sing that little song of meditation just to focus one last time. Hallelujah. Simple. It's a simple word. It just simply says hallelujah. That's all it says. Will you open your heart with me right now? Would you begin just to sing that with us? Hallelujah. 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 Sing that one. 
one more time. Let's sing. blesses you. I pray the Lord makes his face to shine upon you. God's favor is on you today. I pray that you leave out of here and you've made the choice. Lord, I take you. Not only do you choose to take him, but he has chosen you from the foundation of the world to be his child. God bless you. Thank you for coming. If you'd like a book, we have several of them available. Our ushers will bring them up here to the altar. We want you to come bring your money. We got five left. Let's give Pastor Martin a great hand. He did a phenomenal job. Somebody open those four doors back there. We're going out into the new lobby. Somebody open those four doors. Let's all go out in that new lobby. We're going to have a moment of prayer together and a special moment of dedication. Join us for about 10 minutes in that lobby. Let's make our way quickly. Let's make our way quickly to the lobby.